Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Some of the things that he was explaining was just so simple, but it was truth that just hit right home. He's changed my life. He's changed my walk. I have a hunger for God now that I've never had before. And this is just the beginning. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a teaching entitled, How to Stay Full of God. There's actually four keys out of Romans 1.21 that I've been teaching from. This is the middle of my third week. And I've already covered a lot of material. I know that not everybody watches every day, and so, you know, just getting a portion of it, it may not have its full impact. So I encourage you to go to our website. You can watch all of the archive uh, things there. We also have over 200,000 hours of free teaching on my website, awmi.net. Man, it's awesome. If you listen 24 hours a day, it'd take you over 22 years to go through everything 24 hours a day. So anyway, go back and please look at that. Real quickly, I've been using Romans 121, where it talks about people who at one time were enlightened by God, but they walked away from it. They deadened themselves to what God had done, and it lists four things that they did. It says they did not glorify God properly. They weren't thankful for what God had done. Then they became vain in their imagination, and the last step was that their foolish heart was darkened. And so they're progressive steps. The very first thing you have to do to keep what God has done in your life fresh and alive is that you have to glorify Him. That means you have to value and prize what God has done in your life. I tell you, this is something that God has been speaking to me about just lately, that God is so good. There's so many good things happening that sometimes it's a little hard to keep track of it all. And you can get to where you just take it like, oh, yeah, another blessing, another miracle. No, you need to go out of your way to put value on what God has done, to praise Him. And part of, of glorifying God, putting the proper value, is to be thankful. When you are thankful, the Scripture says you magnify the Lord with thanksgiving out of Psalms chapter 69, verse 30. And you magnify God with thanksgiving. He gets bigger. What God has done in your life increases the more you thank Him for it. And so you, you put the proper value on God, you thank Him for it, and if you do those things, then an automatic consequence of that is that your imagination will begin to start being productive and you will conceive things. I've already been through all this teaching. Again, please get this. And I've also got an extra book on the power of imagination that we're offering this week only, and it'll go into more detail. But your imagination is where you conceive your miracles. You have to give birth to a miracle. They don't come by the stork. It doesn't come just by drinking the water after somebody else. And you can't get a miracle just by standing next to somebody else who's believing God. You need to conceive a miracle. And based on Isaiah 26, 3, you conceive miracles in your imagination. Anyway, I've already taught all of that. Let me go back and uh, use this scripture out of Psalms chapter 1 and compare this with Psalms chapter 2. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That word for meditate right there is the exact same word that was used in Psalms chapter 2, verse 1, when it says, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So the exact same Hebrew word was translated meditate in Psalms 1, 2, and then it was translated imagine in Psalms 2, 1. So I believe that you can say from this that your imagination is used when you meditate on the things of God. Again, meditation is something that a lot of Christians don't really consciously practice. They think that meditation is something like an Eastern religion where you get in a lotus position and, you know, try and do all this stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about that it's one thing to know what the Word of God says, even be able to quote it, 
BUT MANY PEOPLE CAN'T SEE IT ON THEIR INSIDE. AND THAT'S MEDITATION. MEDITATION IS WHERE YOU TAKE THE WORD OF GOD AND YOU FOCUS ON IT AND YOU USE YOUR IMAGINATION UNTIL IT BECOMES REAL TO YOU. LET ME GIVE YOU AN EXAMPLE THAT, uh, YOU KNOW, I'VE SEEN A NUMBER OF PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD BECAUSE GOD'S WORD SAYS THAT THE SAME WORKS THAT HE DID THAT WE WILL DO ALSO. AND SO I'VE BELIEVED THAT. AND I REMEMBER ONE TIME TAKING JOHN 14, 12, WHERE IT SAYS, VERILY, VERILY, I SAY UNTO YOU, HE THAT BELIEVETH ON ME, THE WORKS THAT I DO SHALL HE DO ALSO, AND GREATER WORKS THAN THESE SHALL HE DO, BECAUSE I GO UNTO MY FATHER. AND SO I TOOK THAT AND I SAID, WELL, I BELIEVE ON HIM, AND I'M GOING TO SEE THE SAME WORKS. SOME PEOPLE SAY, WELL, THE GREATER WORKS ARE BEING ON RADIO AND TELEVISION AND BEING ABLE TO TRAVEL AND DIFFERENT THINGS. I'M NOT EVEN GOING TO ARGUE THAT POINT. JUST WHAT ARE YOU GOING TO DO WITH THE PART THAT SAYS THE SAME WORKS THAT HE DID SHALL YOU DO ALSO. UNTIL YOU GET TO WHERE YOU DO THE SAME WORKS, DON'T EVEN WORRY ABOUT TRYING TO DO GREATER WORKS. SO I JUST FOCUSED ON THAT, AND I SAID, HE HEALED THE SICK, CLEANSED THE LEPERS, RAISED THE DEAD, MATTHEW CHAPTER 10, VERSE 8, AND COMMANDED US TO DO IT, AND I'M GOING TO DO IT. SO I TOOK EVERY INSTANCE IN THE BIBLE WHERE A PERSON WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD, ELIJAH, ELISHA, AND IT WENT ALL THE WAY THROUGH THE NEW TESTAMENT. THERE'S A TOTAL OF EIGHT PEOPLE OUTSIDE OF JESUS BEING RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND THEN THERE'S AN INSTANCE WHEN JESUS WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD THAT IT SAID MANY PEOPLE CAME OUT OF THEIR GRAVES AND WALKED INTO THE CITY OF JERUSALEM. AND SO EXCLUDING THOSE THAT IT DIDN'T GIVE A SPECIFIC AMOUNT FOR AND EXCLUDING THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, JUST LOOKING AT THE OTHER TIMES THAT PEOPLE WERE RAISED FROM THE DEAD, THERE WERE EIGHT INSTANCES AND I TOOK ALL OF THOSE INSTANCES AND WROTE THEM OUT ON A a PIECE OF PAPER. THIS IS BACK BEFORE I HAD A COMPUTER. AND I JUST WROTE THEM OUT. AND EVERY DAY I WOULD JUST MEDITATE ON THAT. AND I GOT ALL OF THE INFORMATION. YOU KNOW, YOU HAVE TO READ THE BIBLE LIKE THIS TO GET THE INFORMATION. BUT THEN ONCE YOU GET THE INFORMATION AND ONCE I HAD STUDIED IT AND LOOKED AT IT AND COMPARED THESE DIFFERENT INSTANCES AND LEARNED WHAT I COULD LEARN, THEN I I PUT THE BIBLE DOWN AND I JUST STARTED MEDITATING ON IT, WHICH, AGAIN, I'M SAYING IS USING YOUR IMAGINATION. AND IT'S NOT ENOUGH TO JUST SEE JESUS RAISING LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD, BUT I SAW MYSELF. I MEDITATED ON IT, AND I THOUGHT, WHAT WOULD IT BE LIKE FOR ME IF I WAS THERE? AND I'D CLOSE MY EYES AND I'D LOOK, AND I'D SEE MYSELF STANDING IN FRONT OF LAZARUS' TOMB. AND IN THE SAME WAY THAT JESUS CRIED WITH A LOUD VOICE, HE DIDN'T WHISPER IT SO THAT IF NOTHING HAPPENED, YOU KNOW, THAT uh, NOBODY ELSE WOULD HEAR and, AND SEE THAT NOTHING HAPPENED. NO, HE WAS BOLD, AND HE SAID, WITH A LOUD VOICE, LAZARUS COME FORTH. I DID ALL OF THAT. I DID WHAT ELISHA DID. YOU KNOW, ELISHA WENT IN AND RAISED A BOY FROM THE DEAD, AND HE PUT HIS HANDS UPON HIS HANDS, AND HIS FEET UPON HIS FEET, AND HIS MOUTH UPON HIS MOUTH. AND I ACTUALLY LAID ON A BED AND USED MY IMAGINATION TO SEE WHAT IT WAS LIKE. HOW WOULD I DO THIS? I GOT THE INFORMATION, BUT THEN I MEDITATED ON IT UNTIL I COULD SEE MYSELF DOING IT. I REMEMBER WHEN DAVID FOUGHT GOLIATH. AND THIS IS BACK, MAN, WHEN I WAS A TEENAGER. AND I REMEMBER READING ABOUT THAT, AND I GOT A COMMENTARY AND READ HOW TALL THEY THOUGHT GOLIATH WAS, AND THEY BELIEVE HE WAS AT LEAST NINE FOOT SIX. I STOOD NEXT TO A MAN WHO WAS CLOSE TO NINE FOOT SIX. HE WAS NINE FOOT SOMETHING. AND I MEAN, I SAW THAT GUY. MY my EYES CAME TO HIS BELT BUCKLE. HE WAS HUGE. AND uh, ANYWAY, I SAW THIS. AND SO I REMEMBER AS A KID GOING OUT AND MAKING A MARK ON A TREE THAT WAS NINE FOOT SIX. AND I LOOKED AT THAT. AND THEN I BENT DOWN SOME, BECAUSE I'M 5'11", AND MOST PEOPLE BELIEVE THAT BACK IN THOSE DAYS, uh, DAVID MIGHT HAVE BEEN AROUND FIVE FOOT TALL. SO I BENT DOWN. AND WHAT I WAS DOING, I WAS USING MY IMAGINATION, NOT JUST INFORMATION, THAT DAVID KILLED A a GOLIATH THAT WAS NINE FOOT SIX, BUT I TRIED TO PICTURE IT AND SEE IT. AND IT HELPED THAT SCRIPTURE COME ALIVE. I REMEMBER WHEN WE DID A TOUR OF ISRAEL, AND I TOOK MY ENGLISH PARTNERS ON A TOUR MANY YEARS AGO, AND THE TOUR BUS, IT WAS A HOT DAY. WE STOPPED IN THE VALLEY OF ELAH, IS WHERE DAVID uh, FOUGHT GOLIATH, AND THEY PARKED THE BUS ON THE SIDE OF THE ROAD, AND THEY SAID, DOES ANYBODY WANT TO GET OUT AND LOOK AROUND? AND YOU KNOW, BACK THEN, I DON'T KNOW EXACTLY HOW IT IS NOW, BUT IT WAS BASICALLY STILL JUST EMPTY SPACE. AND THERE WAS LIKE TWO MILES ACROSS FROM ONE MOUNTAIN TO THE OTHER, AND IT WAS JUST THIS VALLEY, AND IT WAS SEMI-DESERT. 
and it was hot. Nobody else wanted to get out, but I got out because I wanted to see it. I wanted this burnt into my consciousness. And I walked out into that valley, and there was a little dry uh, stream bed, and I picked up five smooth stones, just like what David did. And I stood there, and I looked, trying to picture what it would have been like to see the Philistines on all of these mountains, and then the Israeli on the other mountains, and to see Goliath. And I pictured it. That's, that's meditation is what that is. This is how you meditate on the Word. It has to become more than just information where you can quote something. It has to be something that you can see in your heart. And because I've done this, you know, like I was referring about seeing people raised from the dead, I took all of this information. I did all of these things to help me imagine and see what it would be like AND I GOT TO WHERE AT NIGHT I WOULD DREAM AND SEE 20 OR 30 PEOPLE A NIGHT RAISED FROM THE DEAD. It just, I BECAME SO FOCUSED ON THIS THAT IN MY DREAMS I WOULD SEE PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND I'D WAKE UP JUST PRAISING GOD BECAUSE I'D SEEN BUNCHES OF PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. It was, THAT'S HOW MUCH IT WAS DOMINATING MY THOUGHTS. AND THEN GUESS WHAT? SOMEBODY DIED. AND I WAS ABLE TO SEE THEM RAISED FROM THE DEAD BECAUSE I HAD CONCEIVED IT. I COULD SEE MYSELF DOING IT, AND IT HAPPENED. AND THEN I WENT ABOUT, I DON'T KNOW, 10 OR 15 YEARS, AND I HADN'T SEEN ANYBODY PERSONALLY RAISED FROM THE DEAD. SOME OF THE PEOPLE I HAD MINISTERED TO AND SHARED SCRIPTURE WITH, THEY HAD SEEN THINGS LIKE THAT HAPPEN. I JUST GOT BACK FROM A CHURCH IN OHIO WHERE A GUY WHO I IMPACTED PROBABLY 30 YEARS AGO AND TAUGHT HIM A LOT OF THESE THINGS. HE'S SEEN 16 PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD IN THEIR CHURCH IN COLUMBUS, OHIO. AND uh, SO ANYWAY, I HADN'T SEEN IT PERSONALLY FOR A WHILE, AND I THOUGHT, I'M GOING TO GO BACK AND DO THE SAME THING I DID BEFORE. AND I JUST WENT BACK. BY THIS TIME, I HAD A COMPUTER. I PUT IT ALL ON COMPUTER. I STARTED READING THOSE SCRIPTURES, MEDITATING ON IT, IMAGINING WHAT IT WOULD BE LIKE NOT ONLY TO SEE JESUS RAISE LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD, BUT HOW WOULD I RAISE LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD? HOW WOULD I RAISE THE WIDOW'S SON, uh, THE Shunammite'S SON FROM THE DEAD, LIKE ELIJAH AND ELISHA DID? AND I FOCUSED ON THESE THINGS. AND AGAIN, I STARTED DREAMING. AND THEN on, IN 2001, MY SON DIED. AND HE WAS DEAD BETWEEN FOUR AND FIVE HOURS. BUT WHEN I HEARD THAT, I WAS IMMEDIATELY ABLE TO RELEASE MY FAITH BECAUSE I HAD CONCEIVED IT IN MY IMAGINATION. I HAD BEEN FOCUSED ON IT, AND IT WASN'T SOMETHING THAT WAS WEIRD OR STRANGE TO ME. I HAD LIVED IT. I HOPE YOU UNDERSTAND THE POINTS THAT I'M MAKING. ACCORDING TO THESE TWO SCRIPTURES, YOU MEDITATE IN THE WORD DAY AND NIGHT, AND THEN THAT SAME WORD IS TRANSLATED IMAGINE. THE WAY YOU MEDITATE IS YOU HAVE TO TAKE THESE TRUTHS and, AND GET THE INFORMATION, BUT THEN YOU MEDITATE ON IT IN YOUR IMAGINATION UNTIL YOU SEE IT COME TO PASS. GOD SAID THAT YOU CAN LAY HANDS ON THE SICK AND THEY SHALL RECOVER. THERE ARE MANY OF YOU THAT KNOW THAT VERSE. YOU COULD QUOTE IT. YOU COULD PROBABLY GO FIND IT but you haven't seen yourself doing it. Matter of fact, if we were in a service right now, and if somebody was to, you know, have something happen, say they have an attack, they fall over dead or something, and I say, how many of you believe that God can do this? Most people that would come to my meetings would all say, oh yeah, we believe God can do anything. All things are possible. And man, they'd rejoice and cheer, go for it. But where I'd lose most people, I say, IS I'D SAY, ALL RIGHT, IF YOU BELIEVE IT, YOU COME UP HERE AND PRAY FOR THEM. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, MAN, YOUR EXCITEMENT TURNS INTO DREAD, YOUR FAITH TURNS INTO FEAR, PANIC HITS YOU, LIKE, WELL, I BELIEVE GOD CAN DO IT. I BELIEVE YOU CAN DO IT. BUT ALL OF A SUDDEN, THERE'S JUST A DISCONNECT. WHAT'S THE PROBLEM? THE PROBLEM IS YOU HAVEN'T SEEN YOU DOING IT. YOU CAN'T DO SOMETHING THAT YOU HAVEN'T SEEN YOURSELF IN YOUR HEART DOING IT. AND MOST PEOPLE JUST READ OVER A VERSE, LIKE IN MARK CHAPTER 16, WHERE IT SAYS, YOU SHALL LAY HANDS ON THE SICK, AND THEY SHALL RECOVER. AND YOU THINK, WELL, THAT'S NICE, AND THEY'VE GOT THAT INFORMATION, BUT THEY HAVEN'T TAKEN THAT TRUTH AND MEDITATED ON IT UNTIL THEY SEE THEMSELVES DOING IT. DID YOU KNOW WHEN I STARTED HOLDING THESE MEETINGS, THIS IS BACK IN 2002, I HAD BEEN MINISTERING IN CHURCHES, BUT WE WERE JUST BEGINNING TO START COMING OUT OF CHURCHES AND HOLDING OUR OWN INDIVIDUAL MEETINGS. 
AND I HONESTLY DIDN'T KNOW EXACTLY HOW TO DO IT. AND I WANTED TO GIVE AN INVITATION FOR PEOPLE TO BE BORN AGAIN AND BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT, BUT THAT CAN TAKE SO MUCH TIME THAT WHILE YOU'RE DEALING WITH THEM, YOU LOSE ALL OF THE PEOPLE THEY BEGIN TO LEAVE. AND I WAS JUST THINKING, GOD, HOW DO I DO THIS? AND SO YOU KNOW WHAT I DID? I JUST STARTED MEDITATING, IMAGINING, AND SEEING, GOD, HOW DO I DO THIS? AND I MEAN, FOR A WEEK OR TWO, I WAS PRAYING ABOUT HOW DOES IT WORK? AND THEN IN A DREAM, I SAW MYSELF STANDING AND MINISTERING, AND GOD SHOWED ME EXACTLY HOW TO MINISTER. AND TO THIS DAY, 20 some YEARS LATER, I'M STILL DOING THE EXACT SAME THING. AND I'VE SEEN TENS OF THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY GHOST, PROBABLY HUNDREDS OR MAYBE THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE BORN AGAIN, ALL BECAUSE I TOOK TRUTHS THAT GOD HAD GIVEN ME, BUT I MEDITATED ON IT UNTIL, GOD, HOW DO YOU WANT ME TO DO? WHAT DO YOU WANT ME TO DO? AND I SAW IT IN MY HEART. AND ONCE I SEE SOMETHING IN MY HEART, THEN IT'S JUST A SHORT PERIOD OF TIME UNTIL I'LL SEE IT WITH MY EYES. WE'RE RIGHT NOW IN THE PROCESS OF BUILDING STUDENT HOUSING. AND, YOU KNOW, I CAN'T JUST TELL A BUILDER, GO OUT THERE AND BUILD SOMETHING. I HAVE TO GIVE HIM AN IDEA OF WHAT I WANT. SO WHAT DO I WANT? I'VE NEVER LIVED IN A DORMITORY BEFORE. AND SO, YOU KNOW WHAT? I HAD TO PRAY ABOUT IT. AND THE LORD GAVE ME SOME PARAMETERS AND SOME OF THE THINGS, he, HE'S GIVEN US A BEAUTIFUL PIECE OF PROPERTY IN WOODLAND PARK. I MEAN, IT'S AWESOME. WE NOW HAVE A TOTAL OF 493 ACRES, AND IT'S ALL WOODED, AND IT'S JUST BEAUTIFUL. AND I REALLY FEEL LIKE GOD WANTS ME TO STEWARD THIS PROPERTY AND NOT JUST BUILD THINGS AND, and TURN IT INTO LIKE a, A CITY OR SOMETHING. SO I REALLY FELT IN MY HEART A DESIRE WAS TO PUT THESE THINGS BACK INTO THE WOODS, MAKE THEM LIKE LODGES MORE THAN LIKE BIG DORMITORIES, HAVE SMALLER NUMBER OF PEOPLE THERE, AND JUST KEEP THE PRISTINE uh, ATMOSPHERE. SO THOSE ARE THINGS THAT... SEE, THESE ARE PARAMETERS THAT GOD GAVE ME, AND EVERYTHING ELSE THAT WE BUILT HERE HAS BEEN FIRST CLASS. IT'S REALLY NICE, AND I DIDN'T WANT TO BUILD A DORMITORY THAT JUST HAD, uh, YOU KNOW, LIKE BUNK BEDS IN A LARGE ROOM LIKE WHEN I WAS IN THE MILITARY. SO I COULD SEE THESE THINGS ON THE INSIDE. AND I JUST MEDITATED ON IT, IMAGINED UNTIL IT BECAME CLEAR, AND THEN I SHARED IT WITH AN ARCHITECT, AND HE'S BUILT THIS, AND uh, THAT'S WHAT WE'RE BEGINNING TO BUILD. BUT ALL OF THESE THINGS HAVE TO START IN YOUR IMAGINATION. THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT JUST DON'T SEEM TO HAVE A VIVID IMAGINATION. YOU KNOW, LIKE THE REALTORS AND THE uh, um, ARCHITECTS THAT I'VE DEALT WITH, THEY TOLD ME BEFORE THAT WHEN THEY MENTION SOMETHING AND THAT WE WANT TO DO THIS, THAT PEOPLE JUST CAN'T SEE IT. THEY JUST DON'T SEEM TO HAVE A FUNCTIONAL IMAGINATION, AND THEY'LL HAVE TO DRAW IT OUT ON A PIECE OF PAPER TO SHOW THEM WHAT THEY'RE TALKING ABOUT. BUT my, I'VE GOT A VIVID IMAGINATION, AND MY ARCHITECT TOLD ME HE CAN JUST MENTION SOMETHING AND, and DESCRIBE IT A LITTLE BIT, AND I SAY, THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT I WANT, OR NO, I WANT IT TO CHANGE. I CAN SEE THINGS. I DON'T KNOW IF EVERYBODY'S THAT WAY, BUT I BELIEVE EVERYBODY CAN BE THAT WAY. AND YOU'VE GOT TO USE YOUR IMAGINATION BEFORE YOU SEE THINGS WITH YOUR PHYSICAL EYES. YOU'VE GOT TO SEE IT IN YOUR HEART. AND ONE OF THE WAYS YOU DO THAT IS BY MEDITATING, TAKING THE TRUTHS OF GOD AND MEDITATING ON THEM UNTIL IT BECOMES REAL TO YOU. IT'S NOT ENOUGH TO SEE PAUL RAISING THE BOY WHO FELL OUT OF THE WINDOW FROM THE DEAD. YOU NEED TO TAKE THAT TRUTH AND SAY, GOD, YOU SAID THE SAME WORKS THAT YOU DID, WE CAN DO ALSO. WE HAD THE SAME FAITH THAT HE HAD. WE HAVE LIKE PRECIOUS FAITH. THAT'S WHAT PETER SAID OVER IN 2 PETER CHAPTER 1. AND SO IF YOU SEE PETER RAISING DORCAS FROM THE DEAD, THEN THAT'S GREAT TO KNOW THAT HE DID THAT FOR DORCAS, BUT CAN YOU SEE YOURSELF RAISING DORCAS FROM THE DEAD? CAN YOU SEE THOSE THINGS? I TELL YOU, GOD'S SPEAKING TO A LOT OF PEOPLE TODAY. THE LORD IS GIVING YOU SOME INFORMATION THAT YOU'VE GOT DESIRES THERE ARE THINGS THAT GOD HAS PLACED IN YOUR HEART, BUT YOU'VE NEVER JUST TAKEN THE TIME TO SIT DOWN AND IMAGINE THEM COMING TO PASS. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT HAVE BUSINESSES, BUSINESS IDEAS IN YOUR HEART, AND YOU PRAY THAT GOD WILL SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER MAKE IT HAPPEN, BUT YOU DON'T SEE IT. YOU CAN'T SEE IT. YOU NEED TO TAKE THINGS AND MEDITATE ON IT. AND I TELL YOU, MY PERSONAL EXPERIENCE IS THAT WHEN I START IMAGINING AND THINKING ON THINGS, THERE'S JUST I DON'T KNOW, THERE'S A THRESHOLD THAT I PASS, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, IT'S JUST LIKE, BOOM, I'VE GOT IT. I SEE IT. AND ONCE I SEE IT ON THE INSIDE, 
I know it's just a matter of time until I see it on the outside. Again, I don't have the words that I need to be able to describe this to you, but I have experienced it. And I know when I have something that's been conceived, and it takes time. And if you haven't done this before, it may take you more time than it takes me or somebody who does this on a regular basis if it's new to you. But you need to set aside time. Take what the Word of God says, what Jesus has provided for you, and then what He speaks to you specifically, and you need to sit down and just meditate. And with your imagination, say, God, what does this look like? How's it going to look like if my business prospers? How's it going to look like if I go out and begin to start preaching the gospel or ministering to people? If I start seeing miracles happen, I want to see myself doing it. And you start meditating like that and using your imagination. And I tell you, something will happen. You will conceive a miracle. And then it's just a matter of time until you give birth to that. There's things, you know, I've, t I've mentioned that we've built $130 million worth of buildings on our Karis Bible College campus. But I've also conceived, and I have at least another $100 million. It could be $150 million worth of buildings that God has shown me that we need. And I'm in the process right now of just meditating on that and thinking, God, what's this going to look like? And there's lots of times I'll walk around the property and I'll look and I, I just want to see things. I remember when I built a deck on my house, I put a five-gallon bucket out on the dirt and I would just sit there for hours at a time looking at things. And my wife would come out and say, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm planing this deck. And I'd just sit there and see it. I saw three tiers to this deck. We had a hot tub and stuff. And I would just sit there and think and imagine and then all of a sudden, after I, I just got it set, this is what I want, I had it, then I built it, and it came to pass. But this is, a builder can't just go out and start building a building. You have to have plans. You have to know what you're going to do. And I'm telling you, it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. You need to conceive your miracles. You meditate in the Word of God by taking those truths and then imagining them coming to pass in your life. And this is something that very, very, very few people really emphasize and do. We get so busy that if you aren't careful, the busyness will choke out your time to sit and just think. You know, in times past, people didn't have television. They didn't have uh, the Internet. They didn't have social media. And people would work, but then they'd go home, and they'd eat, and they'd just sit on the porch. And they'd think, and they'd look. And I tell you, that we miss that. You need some downtime. The Scripture says, Be still and know that I am God. You need some time to just think and imagine and see God's will and God's plan for your life coming to pass. I've got this book entitled, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. And what I've talked about today is one of those great keys. And so I've got this book. I've got a study guide. I've got CDs. I've got DVDs that go along with it. And this week only, I'm also offering the power of imagination. It'll go into further detail on what we've talked about today. So please listen to our announcer and call or write today. Learn the essentials to having a strong relationship with God when you get Andrew's teaching, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. Today, Andrew is offering his book as a gift to you absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Andrew's entire series, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God, is available in a book, study guide, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew is offering these products as part of the Discover the Keys package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either a CD or DVD album. The Discover the Keys package has a catalog value of $80, but it can be yours today for only $60. Today, Andrew is offering his book, The Power of Imagination, as a special offer. 
In The Power of Imagination, Andrew Womack will help you unlock the power of your imagination and explain how you can put it to work, giving you hope for the future. Learn how to see yourself healed, prosperous, and victorious when you get Andrew's book titled The Power of Imagination. Contact us today to receive this valuable resource. Visit our website to see all the ways you can get this teaching. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Now that we've got our garage paid off, I'm going full steam ahead on building student housing. We're breaking ground in the spring and we are believing that by the fall of 2023, we are gonna have student housing. It just depends on how the response goes as to how quickly we can build it. And so I'd like to encourage you to pray about becoming a foundation builder with us. That's what we call this partnership for building out our Karis Bible College Check it out at awmi.net. Coach Tony and also JB, you know, we started this about two years ago, uh, talking about the kneeling issue in the NFL, and you were sharing with me some of the background stories behind these people, and we just got to saying, we need to get these stories out there because there was another side. I'm Tony Dungy, and I'm really excited about a new series I've been working on with James Brown called Beyond the Game. You've been called Captain Kirk, yeah. you know, a leader of men. Jesus ultimately did that better than anyone, and, uh, and his influence to this day is greater than anyone's. And so I look to him, look to the Bible, look to Scripture and, and the Gospels to say, how did he lead? What did he do? And then try to live that out. Coaches and athletes in your favorite sports, and you get to see a side of them that we don't always get to see their face side. We have so much negative press about athletes and you know, spousal abuse and all kinds of things going on. And I think that this is really gonna make a difference for people to see that there's some really godly people out there. Clearly it's the aberrant behavior of a few that gets the majority of the headlines. So it's not only good for the athletes, but I know that you guys sometimes are just throttled in what you can say about the Lord. We get so frustrated, especially when we'll go out and do a feature piece, uh, but it has to get cut down into a one minute or two minute interview. And the audience can't really hear what is in the heart of these men. We're thankful to you, as Tony said, to give us this platform, Andrew. We'd love to have your help. Go to beyondthegame.co to find out details. GospelTruth.tv provides free, 24-7 access to biblical teaching you can trust. Our Grace and Faith channel features teaching from Andrew Womack and other ministers he's personally invited to share with you. Watch daily live programming, including Bible studies and the Truth and Liberty Coalition, as well as conferences, miraculous testimonies, life-changing stories, and financial breakthroughs. Start watching for free today. Visit GospelTruth.tv for biblical teaching you can trust.